We didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. Good morning, folks. <laughs> I'm going to start out every episode regaling everyone with the soft, soothing sounds of my voice. The soft. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Uh, my voice is so aggressive first thing in the morning. What? I need to learn to tune it. Turn, t- Tur- turn, it, turn t- it down. Turn it down. Tune, tune it. it. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Turn it down Oof. and tune it up. Monday morning. Monday. Monday, Monday. Happy Monday to you. Today. Happy Monday. Something happened with the Chicago World's Fire. You mean uh, the chicken fire? The chicken fire. The chicken fire. Well, we'll get into that when we come back after the intro. Oh, look at that. What a segue. Are we ready to begin? Good morning. My name is Misty. Come on, I give time. We would be honored if you would join us. The greatest adventure of all time. We just become best friends. Yep. Come on, let's get in the character. The Chicago Fire of 1871, also called the Great Chicago Fire, burned from October 8th to October 10th. So that means today is... The 11th. Oh, they put it out yesterday. The reason that we're doing this is because a few months ago, I read somewhere in like, I don't know, that it happened in like August-ish, and we found out that wasn't true. Oh. So we put this episode off. So the day it started was actually Friday. We can't do an episode about the Chicago Fire on Friday because it's, because it's Food Friday. Unless we're going to do like food grilled, right? Like fire grilled peppers, or right? Something. Yeah. So, still being very intrigued by the Chicago Fire, I wanted to do an episode on it. Still, so we moved it to the day after they put the fire out. Yeah, that's my creative scheduling, folks. Well, we still didn't start the fire. We didn't. Um, what did? Well, it's funny you ask. Uh, <laughs> it burned till the 10th uh, and destroyed thousands of buildings, killed an estimated 300 people, and caused an estimated $200 million in damages. We'll find out what money was worth back then in a second. Legend has it that a cow kicked over a lantern in a barn and started the fire. But other theories hold that humans or even a meteor might have been responsible a for the meteor? event. meteor? That left an area about four miles long and almost a mile wide of the Windy City, including its business district, oh. in ruins. Following the blaze, reconstruction efforts began quickly and spurred great economic development and population growth. Wow. So if you want your city to grow, burn it to the ground. So it burned 3.3 square miles. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Wait, what? 3.3 square miles is what it burned down. Well, isn't it... uh... It lasted for two days throughout the District of Chicago, burning 3.3 square miles of the Chicago area. Tragedy took 300 lives, destroyed homes of 100,000 residents, caused the destruction of thousands of buildings, and around $200 million worth of damage. So yeah, everything that you said, plus 3.3 square miles. I was confused by the 3.3 because it was four miles long, and I thought it said a mile wide, but it's almost a mile wide. Because if it was, that would be four square miles. Right. Uh, Fire day. (laughs) October 1871, dry weather and an abundance of wooden buildings, streets, and sidewalks made Chicago vulnerable to the fire. The Great Chicago Fire began on the night of October 8th in or around a barn located in the property of Patrick and Catherine O'Leary at 137 D. Coven Street (laughs) on the city's southwest side. Legend holds that the blaze started when the family's cow knocked out. I already read that part. And and then something else. Did you know? That the great the day the Great Chicago Fire began, a fire broke out in Peshtigo, Wisconsin, in which more than a thousand people perished. No, and I don't even know where Peshtigo, Wisconsin is at. Well I've never even heard of Peshtigo, Wisconsin. I'm gonna guess it's somewhere in Wisconsin somewhere. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. that. The fire burned wildly throughout the following day, finally coming under control on October tenth when rain gave a needed boost to firefighting efforts. The Great Chicago Fire left an estimated 300 people dead and 100,000 others homeless. More than 17,000 structures were destroyed and damages were estimated at $200 million. Um, Here's one of the things that I found really interesting. Many of the victims were never found, obviously, if they burned inside of structures. Mm -hmm. But there were a great number of them that drowned in the lakes and rivers of Chicago. 
because to escape the fire, they ran and jumped into the lakes and rivers and drowned trying to get away from the fire. Wow. Yeah. Would you rather burn to death or drown? I think I would rather drown because everyone tells me, like I've read, I've gone through some times when I was like, okay, let's figure out how I'd like to die. Mm-hmm. Um, and anything that you read from people that have almost drowned is that they go through a euphoric phase that they basically just pass out from the lack of oxygen. Mm. So it's a very painless way of dying. Whereas fire, your skin is on fire and you're. Dead. Yeah. Seems yeah. like drowning would be a horrible way to go. Well, I think really any kind of death outside of natural causes is pretty not great. I mean, I don't think there's yeah. one I would prefer over the others. <laughs> I think I just want to not wake up one day. Yeah. Not anytime same. soon. I'm not. No, me neither. You know. But yeah, same. I would rather just go to sleep and not wake up. Do- smoke some yeah. weed, doze off to sleep, and then see what's on the great beyond. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. You got any more facts or is this going to be the shortest episode of all time? No, I have all kinds of stuff. Uh, okay, like cool. this is, this was a really big deal and it's become a, like a pretty big legend, mostly because of that cow story. Mm-hmm. But, um, here's the thing. They don't really go into detail on the cow story. There's more to it. The legend actually is that Catherine O'Leary, the woman that was married to them, that owned the farm, was milking the cow. And while she was milking the cow, that's when the cow kicked and kicked the lantern over and set the fire. Mm -mm. So she knew about it. She knew that there was a fire. In hindsight, because neither of them died, her or her husband. Or the cow. Or the cow. She denied that she was milking the cow and said she knew nothing about it at all. So there's like a lot of controversy around the origin story of how this even started. It's like, did this woman know that the fire was happening and they were too concerned with trying to put out the fire in their own barn to warn anyone else Mm. that the fire had started? Yeah. Um, But there are also rumors regarding other suspects in the fire. Um... There is a guy named Mike Ahern who was a writer and he said that there was a family living nearby that were hosting a party and it's believed that they trespassed into the cow shed to steal some milk and kicked over the lantern Hmm. because they apparently maybe heard something. They knocked the lantern over while running away to avoid being caught. I love that they were having a party and they went to go steal milk. Let's party it up and drink some more milk. Yeah. We're, <laughs> Woo! We need to make more white Russians. I'm all milked up. <laughs> Crazy. Here's, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but here's okay. a fun fact. Uh, the Chicago Fire Department Training Academy is located on the site of the O'Leary property where the Great Chicago Fire started. In yeah. 1997, the Chicago City Council passed a resolution exonerating Catherine O'Leary, an Irish immigrant who died in 1895, and her cow. I'm glad they exonerated the cow. That's the most important part, really. I mean, definitely. Did they press charges at the time? Why did she need to be exonerated? Um, I don't. Hold on. Let me see if. You gotta have some pretty powerful descendants to be like, I want my great grandma exonerated now. Right. Well, I mean, Chicago is a is a Irish town, and O'Leary is about as Irish as you can That's get. Right. Um, so I, I would imagine that they probably were. Yeah, if you trace that lineage back to like to have your family start in America in Chicago and own a farm that you even had a cow, like you had to be of some kind of wealth at that point. Yeah, to have a downtown Chicago farm. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty nuts. It was in the South Burbs. Oh. Um, the <laughs> month after the fire, Joseph Medill was elected mayor after promising to institute stricter building and fire codes pledge that may have helped him win the office his victory might also be attributed to the fact that most of the city's voting records were destroyed in the fire so it was next to impossible to keep people from voting more than once interesting okay so i found out the answer about Catherine o'leary yeah they did not ever actually convict her of anything but the exoneration Mm -hmm. it's exoneration slash pardoned Basically, it was a public way of the fire department coming out and saying, regardless of all of the rumors, et cetera, et cetera, 
Miss O'Leary had nothing to do with this. So it wasn't a, a, a proper legal exoneration. It was more pu- like in the church of public perception. Please stop thinking that this family had something to do with burning down Chicago. But she definitely did it. Oh, that bitch did it with her cra- she cow. Guilty. But who also, here's my question. That who cow. milks cows at night? You do it in the morning. Yeah. You don't milk cows at night. It's still dark in the morning. Uh, okay, except you don't milk cows at night. Like traditionally, it's not a thing. You milk cows in the morning. It doesn't matter if it's dark or not. Right. What but, I'm saying is she was, it was nine o'clock at night when this started and she was out milking a cow at nine o'clock at night. Huh? Hmm. That story didn't even make sense. That's not when you milk cows. Interesting. Some people will milk a cow at night. Can, you're just making some shit up right no, now. No, I'm can not. Tell. Okay, no. Listen. Even though you got the glasses on, I can see you. The, you're, the wheels turning. The farmer that I watch every day on YouTube. Uh huh. He has this process where, like, if you milk the cow, it primes them to make more milk, right? So you milk them at night, and then they'll make milk overnight, and it doesn't get stagnant and get dirty and stuff. I'm not describing this well. I'm no farmer. <laughs> Fair. But, I would say that most farmers would tell you if they have cows and they are still milking them, which n- most farms now have milking machines. If you have that much cattle, mm-hmm. it's done in the morning. It, it's very, it's a common thing to do it in the morning. So I'm just curious, the logistics of this story don't well, make sense. To maybe me. the trespassers did it. Exactly. Somehow that cow was involved. I that just cow had something to do with this. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, all right. I got one more paragraph, but that's it. And I don't think it has much to do with the fire. Okay. Well, maybe. Despite the fire's devastation, much of Chicago's physical infrastructure, including its tramp- transportation system, uh, <laughs> remained intact. Reconstruction efforts began quickly and spurred great economic development and population growth as architects laid the foundation for a modern city featuring the world's first skyscrapers. Mm-hmm. At the time of the fire, Chicago's population was approximately 324,000. Within nine years, there were some 500,000 Chicagoans. By 1890, the city was a major economic and transportation hub with an estimated population of more than one million people. In America, only New York City had a larger population at the time. In 1893, Chicago hosted the World's Columbian Exposition, which we now know is the World's Fair, a tourist attraction visited by some 27.5 million people. It was a big ass deal. What I want to know more than anything else. Yeah. Is that how in 1893 do you advertise to 27.5 million people to get them to come to your city? Bars and brothels, po- posters, hand drawn posters, like the old Wild West posters. Like, yeah, yeah, like so telegrams we, yeah. that went along the uh, the trains, like where at train stops where people would get onto the trains and stuff. There would be hand drawn posters of this. I. So it's kind of weird. The World's Fair in Chicago, um, you know, I have a thing for Ferris wheels. Yep. It was the first time that they introduced the Ferris wheel. Um, Mr. Ferris was commissioned by the World's Fair to build the Ferris wheel and introduce it at the Chicago World's Fair. It was a very big deal. So I've done a lot of reading about the Chicago World's Fair. And I actually have a coin that was created just specifically for the World's Fair. And it has a Ferris wheel on the back of it. Do you have... Oh, they hosted it again in 1934. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have one of these? A poster of the World's Fair? Huh? No. These okay. are all the 1933, 34. Yeah. I guess I should type in the 18, whatever. Look. 1893. The 1893. Look at the Ferris wheel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Would you have ridden the first Ferris wheel? 100%. Really? 100%. Never having seen them before, you'd been like, I'm right. Absolutely. I've been like, put me in coach. Wow. I want to get on that. That's nuts. Yeah. Have you ridden the one in Vegas? Yeah. I have not. I've kind of made it a point anywhere in the world that there is a significant Ferris wheel to go and try and find it and ride it. I have a list. Ferris Misty's I have a Day Ferris off. bucket list. <laughs> wow. What's next on the list? I mean, wherever I am but able you, to go. Do you have like a famous one you haven't hit yet? it's okay no's a fine answer you don't, you know. i don't think so no. i mean i've hit I, i've hit primarily a lot of like the bigger city ones you know like i've done the london eye done the singapore flyer 
Um, you know, they all have names. They all have hmm. very special names. Um, yeah, I've done quite a few of them. She's gotten around the world in Ferris. Ferris uh, I have. Fair, I've ridden the, a fair the Ferrises. A fair But all, none of that ever would have happened had it not been for the Chicago fire. For half of Chicago burning down and this renaissance of trying to build up this city again, we wouldn't have had the World's Fair there. Way and this economic growth yeah. that they had afterwards. Way too many coincidences going on there. It's kind of weird, right? Yeah. Like, hey, let's burn the city down so that people feel bad and let, let us build it back up better. Just so Misty can have a favorite thing to do. Yeah! <laughs> uh, well, that's all we can get into on the World's Fair. Uh, nope. The on Great the Fire of Chicago. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. I'm losing steam. Chicago. I need a coffee. Happy Moon Day to you. Uh, thanks for listening. Tomorrow we're going to talk about Huge Ackman. Huge Ackman. Uh, leave us a comment and tell us about your favorite fire. <laughs> oh, I didn't need it. Oh, sorry, folks. Sometimes it just comes out. I don't know where he went with that one. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your favorite Ferris wheel. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. And we will see you tomorrow. Oh.